Hi, I'm Dr. John Young, medical doctor. Hi, I'm Alex, the nurse practitioner. And we practice together here at the Foundational Health Center in St. Petersburg, Florida. And we're doing a series on hormones, both male and female. And today we're gonna to be talking about estrogen and the mm. importance of estrogen in, in today's society with breast cancer and all that out there. Should we even be using estrogen? Yes, I, I hear your question. So there's a lot of concern about estrogen. Am I estrogen dominant? Estrogen is not good for you. Estrogen will give you cancer. Estrogen will give you blood clots. So people need to know there's two things happening. There's your natural production of estrogen. The women, we make tons of estrogen. Men make estrogen also. They just don't make a lot. There's a range for them that they need to be within. For us, we make a lot of estrogen. Now, there's a separation that needs to be done between oral estrogen, which means birth control, synthetic estrogen, and your own levels of estrogen. So we need estrogen, yes, we do need estrogen. We need estrogen for our bone density, we need estrogen for our brain function, we need estrogen for our skin, our hair, our nails, ability, ability to talk, because <laughs> you, know, it's, you know, I tell, I tell my patients, when we start getting um, forgetting words and forgetting uh, things that you used to remember all the time, it's the estrogen going down. Usually women, we talk a lot, and that's because of that. That's because of the estrogen working high levels of dopamine in the frontal lobe. So it's very important because uh, actually interesting fact, if you look at the brain cells, the brain cells have um, these organelles that we call mitochondria, and the mitochondria uh, has specific locations for estrogen, which means you need the estrogen in the brain to get the cells going and producing energy so you can get those neurons to connect together and you can talk and you can remember things. So yes, estrogen is good for you. We should make sure, one, we have enough estrogen, and two, we have the right ratios of estrogen for women. There's a difference between the bad and the good estrogen. So that's what we need to look at it. All right, so what is good and what is bad? Okay, so what we do, we do blood work. <laughs> okay. We do blood work. So when we order blood work, we order two different kinds of estrogen. We order E1 and E2, estrone and estradiol. So you always wanted to have more estradiol than estrone in relationship to progesterone. So of course we are here to do that, but it's not the fact that estrogen is bad for you. Then again, we are just looking at ratios and which one you have more. Okay. Now, there is also some women, they just have a tendency to have more of the bad, less of the good. Genetically, it's a factor. It's genetically determined. And when I see that, there are things that we can do so we can correct that problem. So, yes, that's how we do it. So. Now, you know, it's taboo to bring up uh, Premarin, yes. the artificial. So what kind of estrogen do you do? I mean, where do you find it? So I have, the way we do it, we like to do, if you need estrogen, if you are low in estrogen and you're going through menopause and we test your levels and your levels are low and we feel like we need estrogen, the best way to do it is through the skin. So as a topical cream because that way you're not bypassing the liver. So you have no metabolites. So an oral pill isn't gonna... No, okay. we don't wanna do the oral estrogen because the metabolites of estrogen going through the liver, that's where we can get into problems. So we don't wanna do that. Okay. We don't do that. All right, so they, now is it just a pure estrogen cream or do you mix? So it depends. Uh, I like to see uh, to see what age is my patient and, and what their levels are. So I also I always like, if I have a young patient, let's say a 20 year old patient that comes in because they have anxiety. Anxiety could be one of the symptoms of too much estrogen. So the PMS, all women, we know what that is. If we don't uh, have ourselves, we know women that do have PMS. So usually it's an estrogen problem. So if I have a young person with high estrogen, then I need to focus on my estrogen and not give her estrogen. I need to actually 
help the estrogen to go in a good pathway. Mm -hmm. Now, if I have a patient with low estrogen, which means a menopausal person or, or perimenopausal, and the estrogen is low, then I can give just estrogen if the estrogen is the only factor. But if the progesterone is also low, then we need estrogen and progesterone. So what regulates the bad estrogen is progesterone. Okay. And the bad estrogen is estrone. estrone. Okay. So for postmenopausal, premenopausal women, we look at both. If they need estrogen, estrogen has to be given with progesterone always. You cannot just take estrogen. It's better when you take estrogen and progesterone. All right. So, so I understand we don't, and I think we need to explain to them, we don't use the prescription, which is artificial. We don't use the prescription. So what, we use bioidentical. What does bioidentical mean? So bioidentical means identical. So when you look at the molecule of the prescription drug, estrogen, it lo if you look down to the molecular level, you're gonna see that the prescription drug is similar to estrogen, but not equal. Okay. It's similar. All right. Bioidentical means it's identical. Okay. It's identical, so you, it, it behaves, not just behaves like estrogen, but it's identical to what your body naturally makes. All right, so how do they make that? So it's from wild yams. Yeah. Yes, it's from, it can also be made from soy. We, we, we prefer not to use soy products, but it's made from wild, it has to be wild yams, not fawn raised. Um, and they make a cream out of that, and then it has to be micronized. So sometimes patients can get estrogen and progesterone over the counter. A lot of those are not micronized, meaning they're not down very tiny, so it cannot be absorbed through the skin. So we use compound pharmacies so they can micronize that and make it in the cream form so it can absorb through your skin. Now, once the person starts on this, the creams, how quickly do they work? Months, years later, or right away? Symptoms, symptom relief as far as um, when we're talking about estrogen, what we want to see is relieving the symptoms of hot flashes, night sweats, and, and improve of brain function. Usually I see improvement within a month. So it's not the next day. So it takes about four weeks and much better within three months. So usually we do a follow-up with a month, one month follow-up, then a three-month follow-up, and then if everything is good within six, every six months to a year. Now, if a person has or had recently, or even in the distant past, maybe 10, 15 years, breast cancer, would we still use bioidentical estrogen on these people? That's a big question. That's a very big question because you know uh, that if if the cancer if the if the cancer was estrogen driven or progesterone driven, meaning the report says your cancer was growing because of estrogen and progesterone, um, my tendency is not to recommend bioidentical hormones because there are many factors involved into that, uh, and that's that's what I go with. I usually don't recommend. I hope this has been helpful. I've learned a lot, Alex, so thank you very much. And we'll see you in our next episode very shortly.